Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Maggie. I'm a second year med student and a professional MCAT tutor and I run this MCAT mentoring company IFD with my brother John. What you're about to watch is an excerpt from one of our high yield MCAT e-course videos. This is kind of to give you a taste of what these videos are like, but there are full length videos. If you check out the link in the description below, you can see what's in the e-course. Not only are there videos, but there's an e-book. There's so much more. You should check it out. So let's get right into the video. So a way that these reactions can be written, you can kind of, I told you that normally it's going to be two species on one and two species on another, but another way that you can write these is in a half reaction. And what that does is it here's the whole equation down here you break it up into the oxidation half reaction and the reduction half reaction and in that case you see where your electrons are because you write your electrons in these so iron 2 plus going to iron 3 plus that means you are losing electrons because they show up right here when they were initially in this uh, iron 2 plus so you're losing electrons, that's oxidation. You have this and you are adding electrons and so that's going to be a gain of electrons and so that's going to be a reduction half reaction. Then you can add these two together to get the full equation. So then we can add a little bit of math and numbers to quantify how much a chemical species wants to be reduced versus oxidized. And that would be called the reduction potential. Because the word reduction is going to be in this word, this is the propensity of a chemical species to be reduced. So gaining electrons. It is measured in volts and you use the half reactions to, like you kind of place a number on a half reaction. So if you have a positive reduction potential, that means it's more likely to gain electrons. It wants to be reduced. And that makes sense because this is the reduction potential. So positive, it wants to be reduced. If it is negative, that means it wants to go in reverse. It does not want to gain electrons. It wants to lose electrons. It wants to get oxidized. So if we go back to this half reaction slide, we could, we could look up values for these. I don't know what they are and you don't have to memorize any of them. But because this one down here is getting reduced in this reaction, I'm going to assume that this one probably has the positive reduction potential. And then this one has the negative reduction potential because it wants to get oxidized. So then you can take these two half reactions and you can figure out the cell potential of this entire reaction. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So again, this is combining the two half reactions. And so we're going to be adding the reduction potentials. The way this will be written out is as EMF or E naughts of the cell. And that is the entire cell potential. So I'm going to put some random numbers up here. And this is not at all going to be like right. But say that the cell potential for, uh, or sorry, the reduction potential for this half reaction is going to be positive four and the oxidation half reaction for this is going to be positive one. And so the cell potential of this entire equation right here would be positive five. And we can see down here that if the E cell is positive, that means that that redox reaction will happen spontaneously because it is advantageous for the cell overall. And I don't mean cell as in a biology, I mean like a, an electric or like a galvanic cell or whatever, whatever these chemical species are floating around in. If I added up my numbers and it came out to be negative, then that would be non-spontaneous. And if I wanted that reaction to run really badly, I'd have to add energy to make it run. Now, a caveat to this, when you are calculating reduction potentials, it has to be written as a reduction reaction. So take this oxidation reaction right here. I would have to rewrite this as Fe3++ E- yields Fe2+, and that would have a certain reduction potential. So that's got how it's going to be like given to you probably. And you know how I said that this was positive one half for this oxidation reaction? Well, actually when you flip it, I just made up that number. Okay. I made it up to be positive so that this would end up being a spontaneous reaction, but bear with me here. When I flip this equation and I make it into a reduction equation, I have to flip the sign of my reduction potential. So now my reduction potential for this guy is going to be negative one. So what I want you guys to do when you're on the MCAT, if you come across this equation and they say, what is the cell potential for this or the EMF or the E not cell, and they give you two reduction half reactions. So they give you this one and they also give you this one. And they tell you that this one is plus four and this one is minus one. What you've got to do is to see, wait, are these half reactions is that how it's happening in the full reaction or is it backwards? And I see that my CE4 plus is on the left side of the equation and my CE3 plus is on the right side of the equation. So this one's written out correctly, but 
for this one, if I was given this equation, I noticed that my Fe3 plus is on the left side and over down here in the full reaction, it's on the right side. And so I know I'm going to have to be flipping this equation and thus I'm going to have to change the sign on my reduction potential before I start adding them together. Now, another thing to know is that stoichiometry here is not important. So if this was, if this had a two in front of it or whatever, I would not multiply my reduction potential by two. If this is not like, um, there's thermodynamics and stuff where coefficients are really important. And when you're calculating KEQ and stuff like that, not here, do not do stoichiometry or coefficients in your half reactions or in your cell potentials. Just go with the numbers that they give you. And you just know that you may have to flip the sign. All right, guys, I hope that that was helpful. Again, this is just a small excerpt from one of the videos of our high yield e-course. And we filmed like almost 50 videos. So there's a lot more where that came from. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel so that we can keep growing it and keep contributing to the pre-med community. And of course, check out the link in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next one.